Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome back to uh, DIY3DTech.com. This episode, this is going to be episode three of the mirror alignment. It's kind of gone a little bit longer than I thought, but uh, we discovered some new things. So here's what I printed out, uh, basically in the 3D printer. And I'll put the, uh, the links up on Thingiverse. Uh, well, actually, I probably just leave these on Tinkercad, and you can uh, leave the link on my site to get to it because you'll probably have to alter this to what you, what you need. Um, so basically, this is what I printed out. It's about six inches long, uh, and that's about my my printer can go up to about seven inches, but usually I get warping if I go out to the edges. So I, I was pretty safe at six, and it did a very nice job at six in this blue, which actually matches very close the color. I can get it in here somewhere of the printer, which is kind of neat. Uh, doesn't print so well. It's probably some of the worst printing, worst printing colors. Don't ask me why different colors print, but it's kind of a known thing in the 3D printing community. Anyways, um, I offset this a little bit because my, uh, you can probably see that the bolts down here are offset uh, down here. Now this is going to go in the front. You really can't see the front piece, so it goes under the front ones. The the mated pair to these two that are this way. Um, I ended up going with with five millimeters, and so this it be, because it gives me an effective offset of about ten. Uh, it works out to be, you know, basically perfect. I mean, I could go, I could have gone a, maybe a little bit more than five, like five point one, five point two. But the, the pieces is in three D printing. You're always going to be a little bit off either way. So. Um, for practical purposes, five millimeters worked out pretty good. Now I'll turn the camera around and, and show show you uh, what I mean. Uh, but before I put this in, because it's difficult, because I've already put it in, measured it, and trying to get it back out, is it's difficult because this this is about uh, one inch wide, and it's about the width of this this white bracket down here that you're seeing. So it's this slides all the way underneath there flush. And then what I did is I matched the the openings. Uh, to the to the bolt hole so it just simply slides you don't have to take the bolts out you simply loosen them up now uh, again as I mentioned I replaced my bolts with I think uh, three quarter inch long number eight um, so I you know I, I you know have more than enough playroom in here and again I measured these to be a little bit bigger than these openings down here in the white piece so even with the stock bolts, you shouldn't have a problem, but you probably with the stock bolts, they might not be uh, long enough to go through the bed and this together, or it might be pretty close. I don't know. You have to see in your own case. Anyways, for me, I just loosen them all the way up, slide it under, because even with the longer bolts, it takes it all the way to the top of the nut. So I've done this, and, and the results are actually very good. So um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to actually put this in, and then I'm going to change the camera position around so you can see what I'm getting at. You can see the difference this actually makes. So sorry for the bounciness. I've got this now zoomed in because the aspect uh, where I've got this position is a little bit difficult. So one of the things you'll notice is I'm now right at about the top of that, this black line. And uh, I noticed in the other video I have to speak up a little bit because of the mic. So I'm at the top of this black line, which is was was when I went in this way, was my end position. So you can see how much I've raised the bed up. Now, one of the things that I forgot to mention with regards to the plastic piece that we inserted down there is, it, is it's about an inch long uh, in, in the, the, the white piece, the bracket that mounts to the chassis is about an inch and a quarter. Now, you can adjust it a little bit uh, finite by moving it, how far you move it back and forth because it is square. So by being square, it's going to come in contact with the back first rather than the front. I did not make it tapered or wedge-like um, for that very reason. So it's kind of like a good and bad thing. But at, at the end of the day, there's really not uh, really a load put on this like a load put on this like a CNC machine. So I'm not worried about it being off. And with six inches, it seems to be enough support where I'm not getting. Um, uh, you know, extra wobble. Uh, you know, if you're concerned about it, you could probably print two off and put two underneath there, one on each side or something like that, or make up your own, stretch it out uh, if you have a bigger printer. But uh, so far, six really uh, 
doesn't appear to be a problem because the other thing I did that you notice is I, I forgot to mention I offset it so um, it, it's more towards the center so it's not tipping because for some reason the, the bolts are off to this side and I don't know why they're not centered who, who knows it's Chinese right um, so it seems to be doing good but now the biggest thing is I move this that dot really doesn't move. It doesn't rise, it doesn't run. I don't know how much you can see in the camera, because again, I, I'm zoomed up the way I have, have to get, get at it. But this is slick as can be, uh, compared to where I start. And the bed is noticeably at a different angle. Now, one of the other interesting things is, with the bed down before, um, this one of the, these knobs had impacted in shipping this back thing and broke but now what's happening is since i've raised up the bed this knob doesn't hit this knob actually clears and, and you know somebody would probably hit the door i'm not sure but uh the part is is you can tell that this bed noticeably sits up so there is definitely a run in this sheet metal cage and again is, is I was mentioning it's in the more expensive lasers, at least the ones I've seen, that there's a very rigid superstructure inside the sheet metal that all this sits in and keeps it all very square. We, we really don't have that between with these cheaper K40 versions, you know, because the laser tube sits in a sheet metal enclosure, that mirror sits in a sheet metal enclosure, you know, this sits in a sheet metal enclosure, i.e. this gantry. So there is nothing really rigid about this whole configuration. So um, keeping it square, I think, is, is pretty difficult. But this, I, I number one, I didn't expect to see a big uh, rise issue, w which I had. Um, and to see the difference of how this bed is raised up like this, I, I think it actually should also run better, too, because, um, oh, for grins and giggles. Let's do grins and giggles. So now, interestingly enough, this, well, it's showing a little bit off level. So, let's see, let's see this side. Uh, this side's a little bit closer to being on level. Hmm, that's interesting. The bed is uh, just a, a tad bit, actually, my this bed is not if I holding this against here is not perfectly square. This uh, this metal beam is not perfectly flat. There is, but I, I, it's not really running on here. It's actually it have has a linear rail back here um, that that it's running on. Actually, that's interesting because even though it's raised up, that's a little bit off too, being level. Hmm. Kind of interesting things that make you go, huh? I, because I would have expected this to be more physically level. I'm looking at level. Interesting. So, so the case, the sheet metal is actually level. So you, thinking about it, the more and more I'm thinking about it, the issue is going to be. Um, actually back there that sheet metal piece um, what you could probably do instead of shimming up the bed is you could probably rethinking about it shim that mirror in the back after I'm sitting here thinking about it because now that I measure the, the level of this but again that's measured to the table oh man we see talking about level so the table is off so actually the case is, is off because the table is level, uh, but the table is not level, or this what it's sitting on isn't perfectly level, So, but it's showing level, so that means it's not transferring the table to this. That means it's off a little bit. Um, I'm going to think about this a second. I, I'm really not sure. You'd have to kind of go through more gyrations, but I, I'm thinking that if you really wanted to, you could probably try shimming that back mirror, and that back mirror um, is probably also out of level the more and more I think about it. So I think it's a combination of this gantry's out of level and that mirror both out of level, but I've compensated for the mirror through the gantry. So both of them, I think, had leveling issues. 
but I've compensated for the mirror by going extra distance in here. So I think if I wanted to be really technical and really square up both, I could have shimmed that back mirror versus this. Now, because of the tight space in the back, I think it would be very difficult to get in there to try it with some sort of level and try to figure out um, how far it's off. I think it's just easier, more practical to do this because, whoops, at the end of the day, when I do this, this is what counts. That beam stays spot on. So, again, I'm kind of waxing for, for you brainiacs out there that, that are interested in this. If you wanted to get perfect, again, I think you could um, shim both of these. But I'm just going to shim this bed. I'm just going to live with this shim the way it is because it gives me the results. I can move this gantry and it, it's perfect. Um, in a bigger commercial world, I might be a little bit concerned because this is putting this out of level a little bit and so technically there's going to be a little bit more friction but for home use I, I'm, I'm not going to concern myself with it at all uh, for a little bit of use it gets in, in comparison um, because it, this does run uphill just slightly um, if I was really ambitious I'd go out to the garage and get my angle meter and measure it but I'm not that ambitious yet so anyways um, one to share this I, I will have the link on the website to the um, uh, adapter. So, you know, my suggestion would be is if you have the same problem, want to print it out, um, just just measure uh, the distance you need to go up. What I basically did is I just started sticking shims down there till I got to how much I needed, and I just measured it, which came out to be about five millimeter millimeters, and um, that's what I designed and printed it to. You can go into Tinkercad and you can just simply, you know, leave the, um, you know, you know, length the same and depth the same and just put in a new value for your height and print it out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten all this down. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge. What I'm concerned with is because there's nothing to lock it down. So right now everything is loose kind of sitting here, but when you go to tighten it up, obviously, you know, things shift. Like when I go to tighten this mirror, it's going to pull a little bit. So that's going to be my challenge. So I'm going to leave this laser on as I do this and continually after tightening each bolt check it. Now I will have to do a complete realignment on this because just because this laser is striking here doesn't mean that mirror will. I'm sure it will take some fine tuned adjustments so I'll use my laser targets which you see here and then obviously you know pop the one on here. Another one I have for this and pop it on there and uh, do final alignment. But anyways, uh, hopefully this helped explain things, and uh, if it did, if it helped you out, hey, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, every thumbs up helps us make more videos like this. Uh, subscribe to the channel, a lot more coming. Uh, put some stuff out there for the, um, over here on the other side is my bigger uh, two watt laser diode cutter that I've been working on and playing with for a while. Made some modification, 3D printed some parts for that. They're going to be up on the channel. So again, a lot of good stuff coming. I've ordered a new 3D printer we're going to be messing around with. So again, a lot of other stuff outside of the laser cutter that, that's coming too. So, you know, uh, pay attention to the channel if you would. If you subscribe, you'll get all the updates. Cheers. We'll see you in the next video.